Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to get confidence and prediction intervals for a linear regression model in Python. So let's get to it. So in order to make this work, the key function we're going to use is get prediction. And this is coming from the stats models package that we imported last video when we wanted to get R squared. Uh, and so the command to do that is import stats models at API as SM and Recall that in the previous video, on the previous page, we um, ran this code to get this output and stored the fitted model in res. So we defined an ordinary least squares or simple linear regression model using this line here, and then fit the model to the data here. And this is the summary of the output. So this sort of code needs to be run first in order to make the confidence in prediction intervals using the method I'm going to show you here. So let's start off with a simple example here. If we want to make some predictions, we can then call our object res, shorthand for results. And res, you know, could be anything. This is user defined. We again we defined it up in this line in the previous chunk. And the key function here is res.get predictions. Or just prediction, sorry. And the arguments that you give it. <clears throat> are the values at which you want to make the prediction. Now I have to give it two values. Let's say one and 625. Now where I'm getting these values from, one is corresponding to the intercept. So if in this model I am adding constant here and thus have this constant line here, I need to give it a one first. This is basically a placeholder for the intercept. And it has to be one. Now the second value is the value that's going to be substitute, substituted for the explanatory variable, in this case, drowning. And so I'm picking, picking 625 arbitrarily because if you go back up to the data, 625 is uh, you know a bit higher than anything else that we see in the data. So I'm saying, okay, let's predict outside of the data here. But really this could be any value I wanted. So then in our object predictions, I'm going to say summary frame, and I'll give it an alpha value. This is my significance level. We'll use our default significance level of 0.05, which would correspond to a 95% confidence interval and a 95% prediction interval. So let's go ahead and run that. This is the output I get. Mean, this value, this is the prediction of my linear model. So this is the value that falls on the line of best fit at the drowning value of 625. Mean SE, this is the standard error about that estimate. Here are my lower and upper bounds of my confidence interval for that mean, for that prediction. And here are my lower and upper um, bounds for the prediction interval. Note that it doesn't indicate prediction. It says the observed confidence interval and observed, observed confidence interval lower and observed confidence interval upper here. So not not doesn't align very well with the language used in the lesson, but you just have to bear in mind that these last two values are the prediction interval, okay? So that's how we can, <clears throat> at a very basic level, get the confidence and prediction interval for one uh, point one x value, but oftentimes it's useful to get, get it for many values at once and to plot that graphically. So let me show you, how, show you how to do that for many instances of x, and then we can plot that. So let's make a new code cell. First, let's make a new data frame from scratch here using pandas data frame com command. And, um, and here I'm going to just make a new set of x values using the range command. And here I want to span the range of, of drowning data that we have. And so I'm just going to generally say 400 to 625. And the third optional command I can give to range is a step size. So this is going to be the values 400 to 625 in steps of one. So 400, 401, 402, et cetera, all the way to 625. And that'll be stored in this object new DF. The other thing I need to then create is 
a column of ones that are the same size as what I currently have here. So I can say, make a new column, call it constant or const. Um, for example, I could call it whatever I wanted. And this will be a bunch of ones. So I'm gonna have one. And when I have one in the square brackets and then a multiplication, it means replicate the value one, not multiply that value one, this many times. So new df shape zero. So I'm gonna replicate the value of one as many times as I have rows in this new df, okay? So let's take a look at what that looks like just to show that this works as expected. We can look at the first five rows, there we go. So I have my x values and just ones. Again, these ones are placeholders for the intercept. So now that I have those, I can then use get prediction, this function, I can exercise it over all of these values. So now I give it my column of ones, not just a single one value, and my column of x's, not just the single x value. And I will store <clears throat> the summary of these into a data frame. So summary frame. Again, I need to specify an alpha. We'll use our default alpha of 0 0.05. And let's see what we have now. So there we go. So now we've got the prediction at x values 400, 401, 402, et cetera. It's not showing those values here, but it's giving us the predictions, the confidence intervals, and the prediction intervals, okay? Let's merge this then with new df. So we're gonna override new df, which has the x values in it, using our concat command. And so I'm gonna take our existing new df and I'm gonna just append on these predictions. I need to say axis equals one. So it does this over the columns and we'll see what this looks like here. There we go. So now I have the X values uh, in there as well. Okay, let's visualize. We'll import Good old plot nine. All right, got this backwards. Sorry, this should be from plot nine. We will import all the commands. And then we can start with our initial data frame that has the, the data in it. And we'll just start by plotting those points. So our X was the drowning and our Y is the nuclear and let's see what that looks like okay so there's our scatter plot just the data points we can use geom smooth to conveniently make not only our line of best fit but also our confidence interval. So we can give it the aesthetic and then we'll give it a line color. And we can say our method will be a LM or linear model. We'll use, we'll say SE equals true, use the standard error method, level 0 0.95, 95% confidence interval, and we'll fill it with red as well. Let's see what this looks like. There we go. So there's our 95% confidence interval in our line of best fit. So the red lines are line of best fit. We have a 95% confidence interval. And then this, but the thing is this doesn't give us our, um, it doesn't give us our prediction interval. So we had to calculate that manually. We don't have a convenient built-in function in ggplot to make that prediction interval. But what we can do is we can reference our new underscore df, which has the prediction interval information in it. 
And so we just have to plug in this new data frame here. So we're not borrowing from this data frame that we put in ggplot. We have to give it this new data frame and we'll specify our aesthetic now is a little bit different. Our X is the X column in that data frame. And our Y would be the OBS CI lower or the lower limit of the prediction interval. And let's give this a some colors to differentiate it from the red. We'll give it a blue and let's say line type equals dashed. Just to differentiate a little bit more. And we also have to, of course, give it the upper bound two. So we'll just copy and paste this line and change lower to upper. And there we go. There's our 95% prediction interval in the blue. You'll note that it extends a bit beyond what we have in the red here. That is because of this line here, this range, I said 400 to 625. And we see it's going from 400 to 625 here. When I use the geom smooth command, it automatically limits itself to the limits of the data. But if I wanted to extend the line of best fit and or the 95% confidence interval to the same limit as the prediction interval, instead of using geom smooth, I can just use geom line with the new DF because all that information is contained here too. I just need to give it the right Ys, change the colors how I want, and so on and so forth, okay? So that is how to do prediction and confidence intervals in Python. Thank you.